Hello, welcome to Miniature Trials. My name's Stuart and welcome to another painting tutorial. Some more epic battles. This time it's Prussian landware. So the Prussian release has only just happened at the time of recording this. So they officially released um, on the weekend just past. Lots of people have had some of these models included free on the front of their War Games Illustrated magazine as well. So I know there's plenty of people who have been asking me when I'm going to do a painting tutorial. Um, I have had my sprues a little while because I had some um, early review sprues. I just haven't had the time to do it. I'd have loved to have got the reviews out just before the, the release, but um, or at least in time for the magazine as well. But um, this isn't too bad, not too many days behind the release is out there. So hopefully those of you who are waiting on the tutorial to paint theirs, I know most people aren't, this will help you. And it will also give you a good idea to how to handle your standard Prussian infantry as well. Though I will be doing a video for that. All right then, so to repeat myself, um, uh, for the people who have not come across the, the videos before, I like to use, at this scale at least, I like to use a zenithal priming method in order to gain a nice effect from glazes over the top. And I'm actually using Games Workshop's Contrast Paint and Army Painter's Speed Paint. They are essentially glazes and I use them to base coat the miniatures before I then highlight afterwards. You obviously don't have to do the highlighting stages, but I prefer to. And I'll point those stages out in the video so if you want to stop at a certain stage um, when the when the miniature is very much tabletop ready you absolutely can so what you'll see in front of you here is actually the command part of the strip of one of the landwehr um, infantry you will um, you'll notice it looks kind of whitish gray scaleish and that's that's the zenithal priming that I do and there are many stages of zenithal priming in terms of how dark you want it to be but essentially what you're doing is pre-highlighting your miniatures already ready to kind of apply the paint afterwards and then when your paint is thin enough oh yeah glaze the, uh, the, the the highlights and the, the shadows show through on the paint job, meaning you have to do less work afterwards. Um, and that's essentially what, what Citadel contrast paints do anyway. They tend to advertise them as a basic slap on over a plain white. If you, um, if you do do them over a, a pre-highlighted model, and you then highlight afterwards, it can be used very much in, in, a, in a sort of a higher standard of painting as well. So what I've done with these miniatures, I have primed them black. I have then used the airbrush to um, paint white, basically from a top down angle, but I've done it from the sides a little bit as well to make sure that I pick up the faces and the fronts of their trousers, dusting it on gently. And then I do a white dry brush afterwards. And that's what you can see in the most white pints. The, the very thin airbrush layer of white is almost leaves it looking gray. I'm gonna pop a link in now to the first tutorial of these of this type that I did, and that's for the British infantry. You can actually see me doing that on video, but I won't repeat that for each video. So with the miniatures prepared, let's crack straight on. I'm going to be starting with Cloudburst Blue from Army Painter. It's part of their Speed Paint range. Um, I tend to use more contrast than Army Painter Speed Paint, but I do like some of these colors. There is Some of the colors do have a slight activation, reactivation problem when you paint over, and over the top of them before you've sealed them. Um, with the colder colors, the blues and things, I haven't really noticed that problem. And what we're doing with the blue we're going in and painting the majority of the model. Uh, we're painting in their coats um, and I'm going to be painting their hats as well. Now, depending on the regiment that you're doing, um, you may want to check first to work out what, what color you need to do because some of them wear black caps. Um, some of them have sort of slightly different configurations and things. So that's worth um, checking before you paint away. I'm going to be painting some Simlesians. Just going to pop a little image on the screen now of what I'm working towards um, and there's a link in the video description of the website the uniform website where I where I got that image from very very useful for all 100 days campaign so that's all the cloudburst blue blocked in and that's the kind of the largest single color area on the miniature now if uh, Tried my best to make sure I didn't get it on quite a few areas. So off the clean off their faces, off their trousers, off the front of the drums, um, the cross straps and things. Um, and that's mostly because I want to make use of that pre-highlight that the Zenithal has given me. Um, once I start going over it, I'd have to touch it up a little bit before I put the contrast color over. Um, so it does take a little bit longer but it's at that stage, but it's worth doing because it saves you time later on when you're highlighting. Um, a few other little things to note 
you want to keep it off the um, the bed rolls, the blankets, that kind of thing, um, and if you can off the hair and things. I'm not too worried about the, the cuffs and collars um, because I'm going to be doing the facings with, with regular paint on these miniatures rather than doing a base of contrast. Well next up I'm actually going to do some flesh and I'm going to be using contrast Gilliman flesh. Um, I don't usually do this stage at this point with these strips of miniatures but some of these guys have no shoes and I was worried I was going to forget and paint over their feet in black because they're such small miniatures and um, so I've decided to remind myself um, by painting in the flesh at this stage. So that's the flesh blocked in. Next up, I'm going to use Contrast Gore Grunt of Fur on the barrels of all the muskets. So next up, Contrast Black Templar. So this is black. So what I'm picking out here is going to be the boots. Those who have them, lucky devils. The uh, scabbards and ammunition pouches and things like that. So with the black finish, we're motoring through the, the base layers for these miniatures. So I'm going to do the hair now, and I like to do that all in, all in one go. So for these miniatures, I've been using three colours to add a little bit of variety. Um, I do vary it sometimes, but I'm going to go with all contrast. So we've got Wildwood, Gorgrunt Fur, and Snakebite Leather. And what I do is I pick a colour, and I start at the back, painting their hair first, then I'll go round and make sure that I make sure that there's any beard or moustache is, is the correct colour. Um, I tend to try and do each model in turn that way to make sure I don't make any mistakes and forget to paint them the same colour. So with the hair done, it's time to tackle the next stage and I'm going to be painting in the bedrolls stroke blankets that a few of them have got tied around there. And I'm going to use Gravelord Grey from Army Painter and that's part of their speed paint range. And next up, some contrast skeleton horde and I'm going to be using that in a couple of places. Um, first place is on the drum itself, I'll try to get it just in the middle of the, the the drum strings. Sorry, drummers, that's probably not what they're called, but someone will tell me. Just so I can highlight less afterwards. Um, and then a little bit on the top, on the drum skin itself. And then the other thing is what I assume are their bread bags. I just want to make them a little bit dull. I want this very thin. I will add a little bit of white highlight to it afterwards. And some of them you actually have two cross straps here. One's the bread bag and one's white. Um, it's a little bit hard to pick them out so I'm trying to pick out a little bit of dark on one side and when I highlight it it's just a little bit of variation. Now the next stage is very much optional. Um, if you've done the Zenithal highlight like me where there's still a little bit of grey and white showing, so you can see the dry brushing, these trousers are going to be white. So you may not need to do this, but adding a little bit of contrast apothecary white, maybe if you've primed just white, um, just fills in the gaps and gives you a little bit of natural shading. So I'm going to add a, a thin layer as it is anyway because it helps smooth out and, and blend those in. And I will highlight again these whites a little bit later on. Now it's time for the first metallics of the paint job. I'm going to use Scale Color, or Scale 75 Black Metal. Um, and what I'm going to do is paint the entirety of the metal areas on the muskets themselves. So scabbard, I'm going to go straight over even where the, um, the um, 
barrel bands and things are um, and then it's optional whether you want to pick those out in, in different colors and, and brass and things like that later essentially you want to cover what would all be metallic on each gun So as we approach the final stage of the base layer, and, and once we've completed this stage, you can you could very much game with it. Um, um, we're going to go and do the trim, which is the your, your cuffs and your collars um, and facings and that kind of thing. And this is the, the the most variable part, depending on which regiment that you're actually painting. So if you're not painting Silesians, then you probably won't want to follow the colours I do now. So and I'm not going to do. Um, a version for each each different colour facing. Um, in the the big starter set, there's a, there's a leaflet, a painting guide by uh, by Warlord Games, which is quite good. It gives you a list of them. Um, and you can also use the website, which I which I mentioned earlier. And I'll pop that image back on the, the screen now. Um, and you can see there's a few slight variances of of where you put the yellow, but we're primarily we're talking about epaulets, um, the collar, and then maybe optional a line on the cuff so some of them are only showing a tiny line um, some of them are showing a larger cuff and it's it's up to you i'm going to paint the entire cuff yellow because i believe it makes miniatures of this and size pop and stand out and i also think the thin line just at the top of the cuff will be very small and very hard to get neat on this miniature in which case you get it out of proportion and then it can look scruffy there's also a yellow band around the caps which i will be doing um, and if you look at the studio paint jobs, um, they've picked out the secondary line, which goes around the top of the cap. Now on the images, um, there's a couple going on the screen now, they are, that's a very, very, very faint line of beading. Um, and I think that, again, that's something to do with this scale, that if you try to paint that in, and you don't want to spend forever doing it because this is one of hundreds and hundreds of miniatures of the scale you're painting. Um, you may well get it quite thick and then you end up with this kind of dominant yellow. Um, so I'm just going to leave it completely for two reasons. One, um, to, to make it look right, it would take too long. Um, it would be very, very fiddly. Um, and by painting it on too thick, I think it gives the wrong impression of, of what the, the, the yellow would look like. Um, and I suppose there's three reasons really. Um, it makes it easier because you're not doing it. Right then, so let's crack on. So I'm using um, a Citadel base colour here. Citadel do very good yellows. Yellows are often problematic paints um, in terms of the, the pigment. So go to Citadel colour, they do some really, really good paints. And so this is base paint and it's Avalanche Sunset. Um, and this will paint straight over some of these darker colors, no problem whatsoever. So there's a lot of edging. This is very much take your time. Um, and, uh, and this will be quite time consuming um, to make sure that you don't get it in lots of places that it shouldn't go. And there we go, and that's all the base layers down really. We could tidy up the white a little bit, but I'll do that as the last stage, but you could game with them like this. I think if you didn't want to do any highlights, I would recommend probably tidying up the white and going from there. However, we're gonna do a little bit more. So the first thing we're gonna do is just use a little bit of graphene gray just to highlight some of the black areas. And I don't do this a lot on Epic Miniatures. The contrast black Templar over the pre-highlighted um, miniature normally does as much as you need in most cases but this pack it was a little bit plain the the ones on the british and the french um, are slightly different the british have black packs but they got white strapping over them but this is quite large so i just want to pick out um, some of the edges slightly now at the same time any of these ammunition pouches if they're looking a little bit plain I can always just grab the top area and just make them stand out a little bit as I can do with the scabbards and things as well so the next stage is one of the, the biggest stages we're going to work on the blue now I'm going to use two colors I'm going to use dark Prussian blue as my main highlight and then there will be a few final edge highlights with the Prussian blue all I'm doing with the dark Prussian blue 
Just trying to put a few faint lines in where the highlights are already showing. So with the first layer on, we then move on to the Prussian blue. Um, and be a little bit more sparing with this, much more in the guise of, a, of an edge highlight. I just want to make the flesh stand out a little bit more, so I'm going to use Noctura Fairy Flesh by Vallejo. Um, I'm just going to pick out the noses, cheekbones and little top areas of the hands and things like that. Next up we want to make that yellow pop a little bit, so I'm going to use Layer Phalanx Yellow and that's from Citadel Colour. Um, again, like the previous yellow, Citadel yellows are very strong in pigment and uh, go on very, very easily. Um, and you just want to not completely obliterate the original colour, but just add in some accents just to really make it pop and stand out. Right, we're getting somewhere now, and this is always one of my favourite stages, and it's tidying up the white, because I think that really, really makes it pop and, and, and look almost finished at the end. So I'm going to use Model Colour Off-White. It's probably my favourite all-rounder white. Thins really well, goes to the airbrush if you need it to. Not chalky, um, just, just one of the best all-around whites you can get on the market. So what I want to do is highlight all the trousers, so areas like that. Um, and then also tidy up and pick out the cross belts. Um, and I'm also going to pick out the strings on the edges on the drum there as well. Now we're going to highlight the gun barrel and add a few buttons and things in them. For that I'm going to use Game Air Silver. And there we are, really nearly done now. Let's get it based up and add a few final touches. And there we are, all done. One Prussian land rare stand, the command stand, painted to match kind of kind of the Silesian regiments. Um, I think it's more than enough to match at that the, this scale. Um, the few little things extra I've added, so I've um, added a tiny little bit of blood to the the bandages that are around the uh, soldier's eye there uh, there's a touch of red just on the underside of the the, the rim of the drum there to, to match the pattern that uh, is on the color plate i used and i just slightly highlighted the uh, sort of what looks like a cummerbund but you can only really see it at the front um, um i don't know why it's, it must be hidden under the the, the backpack at the back there um, other than that, not really too much. I did, when I did the whites, do very, very slight highlights on the bread bags just to lighten them up slightly. Again, little things like that you don't need to do, just little extras that I did as I was going round. But just by highlighting that white, it really, really tidies it up and, and, and makes it pop. The blue is probably a little bit lighter than it than it would be in reality, but on minutes is this scale, I like to push the highlights and the contrast a little bit just to make them stand out on the tabletop. Um, it's just a style I like. You obviously don't need to do that. And halfway through the video, you could have absolutely stopped um, at the base layers. I just like working with contrast paint and, and army paint to paint, um, speed paint that is, because it just gives you a really kind of speeds up that kind of base layer and mid-tone and um, with some subtle highlights on there. I mean, some things I haven't highlighted at all. So the their blankets that are tied, strapped around over one shoulder, that is just the uh, the, the the army painter grey over the, um, the white prime. So that's 
you know, this shows there are areas you don't need to do the work. I've not highlighted any of the hair. I've not highlighted the stocks on the on the on the, the gun barrel and the guns. Little things like that that just save you time. Um, and then where I have highlighted, it's there to kind of draw the eye. So make sure the yellow pops and stands out. Make sure the blue pops and stands out. But it's quite pleasing. They're, they're very nice to paint, actually. They're um, a little bit more simple than the French or the British line. I'm going to be tackling the, the regular inventory next, and we'll see how they go. I was a bit worried with lots of kind of dull navy blues. It's not my favourite colour to paint. Sometimes it's hard to make it stand out, um, but it definitely stands out well with the white here. It'd be interesting to see what that's like with the grey for the standard um, Prussian line. Remember, you don't have to copy this exactly. You can change your own colours. The idea is it's just to give you an, uh, an, an approach that you may draw from certain bits or take certain parts from. Um, and I hope you found the video useful. Um, if you are finding this video new, and I say there's a lot at the end of my videos, but I do, there are new people finding the channel all the time, but if you're finding the video new because you've just started collecting Prussians or Prussians is your thing and you've not looked at the videos before because they've been about British or French, there are other epic videos on the channel, quite a lot. Um, lots of painting tutorials and where there's, while the colors might not be right, there's many transferable skills that could help you um, if you want to paint the rest of your Prussians in, in this kind of style. Um, there are also um, American Civil War on there, there's some Middle Earth things, there's some bolt action, there's going to be some more World War II 15mm soon, there's Black Seas, there's quite a lot on the channel. I'm a commissioned painter by my day, day job, so there will always be lots of painting and modelling um, side of things. So um, let me know in the comments what you think, ask any questions. Um, if you like the video, please give us a like, consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks very much, and I'll catch you soon.